and enter it and and illustrating it with some use cases. Uh, give her a wel welcome. This works? Mm, okay. This sucks, but it's okay. <laughs> yes. Um, no? Okay. Okay, I will use this one. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, today we will talk about a more secure world about Android apps. I will tell you a little bit some stories of things that fail, really fail in Android. And we will see some uh, libraries and other uh, strategies that we can make for creating more secure uh, apps. So before, uh, a little bit about me. I am Mercedes Biz. I am coming from Guatemala. Uh, I am actually now a Duke leader for two communities, a Google community that is called Devs Plus 502 and a Jay Duchess chapter. If uh, you are not familiar with Jay Duchess chapters, these are a female community uh, in the Java ones, the Java users group. And in the past, I was member too of the Java, uh, Guatemala Java users group. Actually, I am CTO in a startup called uh, Productivity. And I am Outsio Ambassador and Oracle Developer Champion. So we will start a little bit. And before, I don't know if you uh, know this uh, company, Equifax, or listening, yeah. Or at least you're listening about it, that one uh, in September of last year. This company don't have spe specifically uh, an, um, a mobile application problem, but they received a really big cyber attack last year. Uh, in that, I have here some uh, specific information, but in this cyber attack, the hackers can introduce in their system 38,000 driver license and 3,000 and uh, 3,200 passwords numbers in their system. After that, in that, on the information that were exposed, we have around like one, uh, the 150 million names, emails, uh, they don't have password, but they have payment cards with uh, their expiration dates. So what's a really biggest cyber attack? And the people now is really paranoid to how we handle their information in our systems. So that includes our mobile applications. And here in the European Union, we have a, a little bit of more issues with this new uh, uh, law, the General Data Protection Regulation, that is the one that has the fault that we were receiving a lot of insane privacy policy actualization emails in the past months. So if we don't save properly the information to our information, or we don't make the handle of this information in our apps good, we can have problems. And because of that, uh, the last year was ejected a survey with the people. And say to actually now users are more worried about that someone stole their information personal information in the cloud that, that someone entered to their homes for a store. So it's really critical. The next thing that I will say before to start with the cases and everything is that security is not something that is delegated to our mobile application and only to our backend system. This is a team effort. So we need to make the things right in the Android side, and we need to our guys making the backend, or when we catch the information, make their part too good. So it's not something isolated, so the Android app per se alone will not make to all this will be safe. And first that I will take you, uh, the, told to you some uh, a story that I call the free hamburgers. So once upon a time in a really far lands, that is in Marland, so we don't have much the culture to eat hamburgers. So people eat hamburgers in McDonald's or Burger King. So one person decided to open a restaurant that sells, you know, a 
traditional hamburgers, no fast food or junk food. And they well, were so successful that they decided to create a loyalty app. And how works a loyalty app? You enter um, some code and you catch points. And for every code entered, we catch 10 points. And when we have 100 points, we can redeem a hamburger. This is simple, right? But what could go wrong here? What could go wrong? So uh, usually, loyalty programs don't represent any loss in a company. Well, not all people will use the loyalty program. So uh, usually, people, when N uh, brought these 10 hamburgers, basically, he paid the hamburger that will be gifted to him. But the company start to lose money for the loyalty program. They say, what the fuck we are doing wrong? Exactly. And, that question came to the people, you know, what is happening? And now that people of marketing say, our numbers say that is not about the strategy, it needs to be other thing. So came with the development thing and they say, okay guys, you know what can stay happening with our apps, why we are losing money. So think in terms of security, what can be wrong in our application? Same code, yes. They were using the same code but in, in some cases. How? Okay, no, no brute force. I will show you. And here the problem was how they exposed their API for a all the applications work. When I am talking about the API, is this the backend, the rest API for manage. And they have this. Exactly, exactly, my friends. This is the worst case of security that we can have in an application. So what they were using, first of all, they were sending everything as parameters. The second thing they were using, get instead of post. And finally, they were not using any SSL or TLS certified. So that means that anyone monitoring a Wi-Fi network can watch that. So what could run? So obviously, promotional codes, any single uh, uh, restaurant had one code. So if I have uh, one restaurant in Charlottenburg, Charlottenburg has one code. If I have one restaurant here in the city box, um, they have one code and always use the same code for give points to the user. So with one code that I can catch, I can put to me new codes. Me particularly, I changed 10 free hamburgers. Imagine that. Yes. So, well, but also all the emails and password and other sensitive information were exposed to. So that means that anyone with access to the network or if I was connected to a public network, anyone can watch my information with the one that I was making, logging in the app and the username that I have for redeem these points. And obviously this was happened because someone monitoring the Wi-Fi. I was not part to this application. I discovered this uh, case because a friend of mine is this hackers that is making pain testing everywhere and connecting in every public Wi-Fi and monitoring everything. And he said, oh, I have codes for can them hamburgers. Yes. So how we can solve this? This is a really simple. The first thing that we need to do is use, uh, well, we can use a combination of things. Just wait, I will quit me this. Okay, yeah, sorry. Okay, uh, with two of these, we will solve that. The first thing is just obviously an SSL and TLS certified. That means that our information, we will travel certified point to point, thanks to the certified in the HTTPS. The next thing is don't use the get. In that if I am using as SLL or TLS certified, and I am sending all the information as parameter in get, the people will can see that instead when it's HTTPS. So I need to change that for a post, for can modify that, and this information travel hidden and encrypted. But the next thing, uh, the last uh, 
tip is use better a protocol exchange like JSON. So we will show that in this way, right now using a post, using HTTPS, and finally sending our information in a JSON. So that means that now this information will travel encrypted thanks to that SSL or TLS certifier. So other thing that can do the hamburgers, like he says that if I have one code to one store because a friend of mine works in the restaurant and give me the code, I can add code always. So they can add an extra level of security in their apps and use hail fences. So that means that I will establish a hail fences around the restaurant and I only will permit to the valid codes, uh, we validate the enter of the code only when the cell phone is inside this hail fence. What negatives or drawbacks have this strategy is that we always we need to the hail location options we enable and the next thing is that we have active the permissions for obtain hail locations and that uh, permit to us pass to the next things about securities in Android. So permissions change it in Android 6 so the ways that we were management that I don't know if you know that or yes uh, not everybody say yes, but well, in the past, what we do when we install in an application, go to Google Play, say I will install that, Google Play say, you know, this app is requiring to you all these permissions and like the privacy and policies, we say, okay, accept, I don't read anything, I don't know what is asking me for permissions and it's installed it. So if they will read all my SMS and one things I am trans uh, writing there, I give permission. So now that change, and what this change is because permission are there for guarantee the privacy of our users. So the next thing is that now we have two kinds of permissions. There are the install time and the room time permissions. So in the past, we only have install time permissions that when the process of installation was made, we give that. But now we have some room times that is that we will ask for those permissions when we are uh, the first time that we will use that permission in our app. And the f idea of this is that we can explain to the user why we need that permission in our app. So if I will read the SMS, I need to explain him why. If I will use geolocation, I need to explain to him why. If I will write or read information, save it in the cell phone, I need to explain why I will do that. So here is uh, how happened in the install time times so we have here all the permissions and here what's simple if the people make accept we will install the app if they do not that is a deny we never install the application um, now we have this uh, for the for some kind of permission or is for all them so now they we will ask to them if uh, they ask to us permissions or deny to us the permission if they deny to us once the permission the next time that we ask to them permission they will can uh, mark that never one that we ask again so we will never will can ask again to him for obtaining a permission and then i try that and never becomes the pop up and the other thing is that people now can go to the uh, system settings and, you know, deny or allow the permissions dynamically. So that means that now in our uh, implementations, we will need to verify that we have the permissions before to use something. So now I have here a little bit uh, of code. If someone is uh, a beginner, don't, don't know that. Uh, but in the manifest file is when we add uh, the permissions that we will need. Then this is the way when we check that we have a, a permission, we use a context, we made the check self permission and I am saying which kind of permission I want and I will say if not it is not granted, that means that I don't have permission to that one. And here is an example of the implementation if I will verify that and then I will verify if I need to uh, show to him a high explanation or not. If not, this is the way when we may for ask the permission to the user. So 
This is not a talk about permissions. You can go to the uh, official documentation and read more about that. So now we will continue and we will talk about human verification. And this is related with the reCAPTCHA application that was added uh, like uh, one year and a half ago. So this is for it. We can offer in our applications the way to people uh, define that it's a human. And it's really simple to implement that one. So we only need to go to the Google website and habilitate, make habilitation of our uh, site. In this case, it's called a site. Then they will offer to us the, our keys. And then I need to include my, uh, my dependencies. And finally, I will make my implementation here. Uh, this is for called the uh, reCAPTCHA, and I will verify the result. So this is how it, this is watched. I have a button. I may click, and they will make the verification, and this is okay. And I test that one, and I am show you to you this. For example, in this case, I obtain a, a false, and that happened to me in my app. And this is because I always, when I am making prototyping, I forgot to put the permission for internet. So we will continue. And now I don't know if you uh, listening about this case. This is for 2014. It's a little bit. All that is about a Starbucks and was in the United States. And what was doing wrong the people of a Starbucks in their application? So they was storing the data of their users in a Playtex file in anywhere. So if I have access to the cell phone, I can read all the information saved in this file. They made that and they sell there the emails and password of the users and they say that hell location, but we don't know in that if they save the information to credit cards. Because the objective uh, of why they made that is for always to a user want to buy something in a Starbucks throughout the app. The user don't need to make a login again or insert any other information. They go to the file, verify the file, and catch all this information to the file. So this is wrong. So what was happening here is that they were saving everything in plain text and with public access. So how we can solve this issue? And here we have two things. In Android, for can save information, we can use the shared preferences or use the internal storage. So for shared preferences, this is the way for implement those, those ones. And here, I think that the problem as usually is when we only are making copy paste to some tutorial and we don't read really what are doing. Um, if I say to my shared preferences that those ones will be in a private mode, that means that only my application will have access to the information saved in the shared preferences. If I put here that I am have a public mode, so anyone can read the shared preference that I have saved there. The next thing is use the internal storage if I want to save that in files. And this is a way to create or open files. And automatically, this will create the file in the internal storage with private access. And this is other way. And again, here have the restricted access that we can put public or private mode. And we can encrypt the information too. If we want. And for that, uh, Android offered to us in Sapin 18, that is uh, Android 4.3, the Java cryptography architecture. So I can use all them for encrypt information in Android. So what we have here, we have a uh, re-implementation to a key store uh, of, of Java in an Android key store that is a uh, interface implemented especially for Android that we save things in the truth zone. So that means there is a zone when anyone have access, only our application. And we can use asymmetric list uh, from the API 18 or unsymmetric list from API 23. So we have here um, a chart or a table that showed to us all the encryption algorithms that we have since the version that was added. Here we have only the RSA since API 18, and then we have all the rest since API 23. And this is a way the diagram that how works this. We have my, our plain data. Then I will choose an algorithm and a key or a pair of keys, and I will obtain my cipher data. And this is a, a small implementation of Zipper for made encryption. And this is other implementation for made that decryption to that information. 
So now talk about the security myth that was the excuse that they give uh, Starbucks in that moment. So first they say that what? What is better? Uh, have a really useful app that is easy to use for our users or have something ultra secure that will be hard to use? Um, well, the myth is before if we can not make friendly user apps and security at the same time, this is a false, this is a lie. The next thing is that they want to make a permanent open session. And I have here this of OAuth, all of us know OAuth, right? That is a protocol for made the authentication process. OAuth started to being a cooker in 2006. And the first version officially launched for use was launched in 2010. And the problem of Starbucks was in 2014. That means that exist strategies for those time for create an app that was secure and user friendly. So what's a myth what they say for justify his problem? So what happened here is that they made a bad API design. And this uh, bad API design is in the REST API. It's that people that create uh, web services that need to obtain the username and the password, the credentials of the user, in every single request. And this is not needed, right? We don't need to send the username and the password always. We can use a token, like establish the OAuth protocol. So this is a, a diagram for the OAuth. So we have here our client server. In this case, is the, our application. So this will request a token in the authentication process to our authentication OAuth server. So he will authenticate our client and will return a token to our application. So then our application will use this token for identify himself in front to our REST API or our server that provide information instead to sell, uh, send all the time the credentials, username and password. So in that case, we will don't save in the cell phone the username and the password. If not, we will use, uh, save the token in a secure place, of course. And I don't know if you know the JSON web tokens. No. Yes, someone say yes. So right now it's really popular use uh, for this token that will represent the users, JSON web tokens. So we can uh, use them for interact with our uh, backend and the mobile application. So this is an open standard that started uh, around the five years ago. Um, it's based for uh, send information encrypted in a JSON notation. So how looks a JSON web token is like this one. I have a header and then I have a claims. So both JSON web tokens usually are used with the combination of JSON web signatures. What, is, uh, what happened with that is that anyone can take this token and put it in a token analyzer and see which information is uh, sent in there. And they can change that information. So we need to combine that with a signature for the people. If they change the information, they then will not match with the signature. So we have these algorithms for generate signatures, and always will depend on uh, which uh, libraries we, cho we choose. And this is how it uh, looks a uh, JSON web token properly signed. So we have the header, we have the claims, and now we have a signature that will validate all the information that I am sending in the claims. And this is, for example, the content to this JSON that I am showing to you. So I have here in the header the algorithm that I am using and the type. Something interesting about the type is it always is a JWT. And it happens that some libraries omit include this uh, type in the header because always is the same thing. So since we, as usually, are not making only mobile uh, and Android mobile apps, Sometimes when we make apps, we make an Android app, an iOS app, and we have two uh, websites created and a backend. And all those then can uh, be implemented in different programming languages. So all of us will use different libraries, right? So we need to choose a library that manage this type in the same way or have strategies for ignore the type or for add the type. And then this is a claims that we have. The claims are in a structure of JSON. And it's all the information that I need for identify that user. So for example, I have here this sub that represent the user. And here they only have the nickname. 
This scope uh, usually represent the permissions that have this user in my uh, system. And we have an expiration date and other claims. And then this is how the signature is created. They encode the header, they encode the play, the play door, and we have the secret of all them implemented in the algorithms that we choose. So this is our register claims, our claims uh, that are defined because are the most popular users. And two of those ones is first this sub that I sh uh, showed to you in the past uh, slide that is for identify the user that represents that uh, JSON web token. And the next one is the expiration date. This is for create tokens that will be expired. This is really common user, for example, in financial application when I have a expiration time in my application. So for example, example, if I expend uh, uh, 10 minutes and I didn't use the application, they will require to me that I make a login again. So when a user open this app and try to make something, the backend will say, you know, your ex uh, session is expired and you need to log in again. And we have then the other ones, we can use them, are optionals or not. So what problems can solve the JSON web tokens are many ones, but are more typical user for uh, the process of authentication and authorization. But it can be used to in federated identities for making information exchange. This information exchange is when I want to send the information encrypted and guarantee that anyone can modify it. But I don't care if the people watch the information or not. It's used to for save a client side sessions. That is when I have a website that have a stateless session. And the other thing is for a client side secrets. And this is the process uh, for made authentication in the uh, authorization. So the first is the authentication process that is when the people make the login. Our user will make a login, we send a username and password, and our server will create a JSON web token with a secret and will return that to the client, and the client will save this token. And finally, the authorization process is always when I send this token in my header, as usually, so the server will verify if this this user, well, is a valid user, is his session doesn't expire, or if he has permission for access the information that he wants. And then he will respond to the client if he can access to the information and will give the information or will say, you know, you cannot do that. So if you want to know more about JSON Web Tokens and how we implement them, exists this website that is jwt.eu for a investigate about it. And I suggest to you this handbook that have two thousand zero people that is really good. They explain everything in that how we use uh, JSON web tokens for federated identities and have a chapter for use a uh, JSON web encryption too. So for continue, I will talk this is a case that happened in a bank. You know, this is a really, really fake case. So when we will transport information, imagine that, right? I have an account name, an account number, and a lot of more things. So if the people say, okay, we need to send this information encrypted. Instead, when we are using HTTP, uh, SSL, or TLS certifies, banks are really paranoid about security. So we imagine that we will send that, right? We will use an AAS algorithm for encrypt information. But the engineer of the bank said, we will send that. Okay, hmm, watch that. Here came the question. What could go wrong if we have this structure? We have the encrypted and unencrypted information values, right? So I don't know if you know this term that is reverse engineering. Yeah, in the past, in Android, that was something complicated when we was using Eclipse and not Android Studio, and the people didn't obfuscate their code using ProWare, because anyone can take the APK, take the files for the APK, make reverse engineering, and obtain all the code files. I don't know if you know that. No, you know where is ProWare? <laughs> Yes, we need to laugh because some people don't know, you know that? Yeah, ProWare works for obfuscate your code and the people cannot make that. What happens if the people can make a reverse engineer in your code is that they can catch all your endpoints and all the structure of the information that you will send to your endpoint. So they can make attacks over your backend. 
So here is the same. I have the unencrypted and the encrypted information. And we are in times when we have really powerful computers and I can run algorithms for discover where is the secret and where is the algorithm user for encrypt that information. So this is why this is a fail in the situation of encryption. So I will continue fast because I don't have uh, much time, but we will run. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about JSON web encryption. When I try to talk with the people in the bank, with these engineers that they believe that are genius, I can, I try to explain that. Um, they didn't understand. So I say, mm, I need to use other strategy and I introduce to them JSON web encryption. That is a way to uh, uh, send information encrypted. In the case to their pairs JSON web tokens, anyone can take the, this JSON and put in an analyzer and watch the information that is sent in there. But instead to have three parts, that is the header, the claims, and the signature, we will have five parts, that is the protected header, that encrypted key, that is an initialization vector, and cipher text, and authentication tag. And we will show a more a biggest a JSON web token for transfer and for example in the header we will have the algorithms and the encoding user and this is an example of the header encoded that have more information for can decrypt the rest of the information and I will continue uh, yes the problem with the user credentials I don't know if you see this meme because I, I think that I stole it from Twitter or from Facebook someone shared that one but yes what happened with this of the fake credential is that one of the problems that we have actually is that the only options for make logging to our users that we are offering is a single signing on. And that requires only a username and a password. And what happened with this is that any, if someone has sold these passwords, pff, can enter there. Or the people have really weak passwords. So what we do supposedly for solve these issues? So we establish new rules, right? And happen this. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, I will say that these websites that make algorithms to verification if our password is strong or not, sometimes I put a really good, strongest password. Say, no, this is weak. And I put QWERTY123 with the QWERTY new per case. And, oh, yes, this is so strong. You say, yeah, sure, of course. But it's not, right? So. We came to our users to experiment the password nightmare. And we be exaggerated with the rules, like this one. Right? Yes. I will not say which platform, but I know that always that I will make logging in this platform, I will suffer this situation. How many of you didn't pass for this situation? See? Exactly. Why I need to restart? I need to. No way, this is impossible. So this is sucks. It sucks a lot, and our users sucks that too. So we can make improvements in the authentication process. Uh, and exist some improvements that are not so nicely. So now is this one, that we need to maybe authentication process when we have something that knowledge, that is the password, someone that we have. I don't have my, OK, OK. Okay, I will try to make that fast because it's only five minutes. Then something that we have, and then something biometric that is something that we are. So we will make to our user made the login with the username and the password, but they will require to him that insert a token, or they may face recognition, for example, or they finally made a fingerprint especially now with some cell phones that permit to us that. And this is something that now is calling multi-factor authentication. And exist other ways to make multi-factor authentication that are worse than that. So for example, this uh, when we receive a SMS, Gmail have that. And once I activate that, until I came to travel and I cannot receive my SMS, you know that? Yes, because not always the rooming works. So I say, fuck, I cannot enter to my Jimmy. So this sucks a lot. Then we have this. Uh, this is an example. Uh, yeah, there is. This is a way to make multi-factor authentication in a more complicated way. So they may log in with a, only with the username in the website. Then he will use an application for a scan this uh, 
QR code. So then we say, okay, it's okay, but they finally need to return to the application to allow the access in the website. So this is multi-factor authentication. So we are making to our users make many steps and need to have many things. So this is worse than they lost their password or create a password one, two, three. This, this, no way. So now we have options. We have federated identity, and I know that many of you uh, use that one. So what happened with federated identity is in the beginnings to the web, we can, uh, when we have a website or two websites that we will use the same login system, equals we will require to the users that introduce the username and the password in the, bo in the both websites. So one website cannot access to the cookies to other one for verify that. It's like when we make login with Facebook, I don't know if you see some people implement really good the Facebook login and others not. And how we know that is like if I am logging in Facebook in my browser and I open a website and this website asks me to introduce the username and the password that I have in Facebook, they implement wrong the password list because they are not really verifying that I am previously logged in this browser. If they implement properly, this will not ask me that, you know, will redirect me directly to the load permission to Facebook. So this is something that was kind of made in the past, and that's, uh, this is the way when it started these servers for authentication and authorization. In the past, doesn't exist, and was a necessity for me to these web, two websites that are related with the same people use the same server for make the authorization in the authentication and use the cookies in the browser. So this is a more complex diagram, but this is with the permission to both domains can access to the cookies to the other one for can access to the authentication. So this is the federated identity. This is when we offer to the users make login with Facebook, Gmail, that are the most common ones. And then we have the passwordless authentication. Who of you listening about passwordless before? Maybe yes, someone who uses Slack? Someone's okay, okay. In the cell phone? No? Okay, solo one guy, two, three or more. Okay. Passwordless is a really means passwordless without password. Is have the chance to our users to make login without a password. So which strategy exists here for made passwordless? This is one that is not related with anything more than geofences. This is for an application that works a as a tool in the office. So they are establishing the fact to if the user makes login and is inside a health fence defined for the company will access immediately. If not, they will require meta multi-factor authentication. This is a way to make passwordless. This is other one that is with fingerprints. And I put first this diagram because with passwordless, many times we put the username that as usually is an email address. So then they scans the fingerprint and automatically we will verify if this user exists or not. So if they don't exist, we will create a user in our system. If not, we'll generate our JSON web token and we permit inside the user in our application. And the same happened, for example, with the SMS codes. So they introduced, but with the SMS codes, they previously need to make a register with a password. And it's only when they will make the login that will permit don't make that with a, a, a password. And we will send a code to the, to the cell phone for they introduce that one in our application. And the most common usage is the magic link. For that is, uh, I was asking to you that of the Slack, because Slack use the magic links. So in this case, it's the same. So the user introduced their email address. If he is registered, I will send a link to their email that will be works for two things. Make the verification of the email and permit to him introduce to the web server, uh, to the website or to the application. And it's in the same way. If I uh, he is registered, I will validate that. I will call the API and I will send an email and he will click in this email, in this link, and will enter to the website. And I was asking to you to Slack because they have this of the magic link. But Slack, for example, always that I join a group in Slack, I need to create a username and create a password. But then, for example, if I change to cell phone, 
I can put in the safe phone the email, they will send me uh, the magic link and this magic link will introduce me to all the Slack channels that I am logging. So for example, if I was, I am registered with a, an email to 10 Slack channels, I will be inside the 10 channels at once. And for final this talk, I will talk to you about identity management. Who of you listening about that? I think that all of you listening about identity management in debt when you don't know that is identity management. So identity management is a, a stop to develop us the part of the sign uh, to the authentication and the authorization and delegate that to a platform as a service. And all of us listening about Firebase authentication, right? Yes, yes, there is for make identity management. So we can have their anonymous authentication. We can make the management to our users in a really uh, small level that is only management, the name, the email, a photo URL, and a password. They provide to us the option to make single signing on, make passwordless for email link and phone number, and then make multi-factor authentication, multiple authentication providers that are federated identity. But Firebase only offered to us the Google, the Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub. And now they have a way to we manage JSON web tokens and we can make the verification on the JSON web tokens. But for example, Firebase don't permit to us the way to manage roles in our user inside to our implementation. And this is because Firebase was conceived as a platform, as a service for mobile applications, but not for enterprise implementations. And this is why uh, Google, uh, well, at zero joined the Google Cloud Partners in January of this year for opera more enterprise solutions in the cloud. So they offer to use single, uh, they have more options that I will uh, join. You can make the management, and in this case, you can choose which information you will require to your users for manage them. You will can define roles and dynamic roles, and they will verify that for you. They have a more extensible federated identity and a more complex passwordless, and have this multi-factor authentication with the application. So they have all these uh, federated identities. Yeah, sometimes we believe that only Facebook exists there. Um, for finish, we have the enterprise identity too. And we have two some banks that offer to us use their implementations as federated identity. And I will put that slides here. I see that was taking pictures, but was there. And um, well, I think that um, it's time for the break, yes. Um, for yes, show the game. Um, yes, I'm sorry, we don't have time for any questions, but I just. But I will be here if someone wants to ask things yeah, yeah. or I something. I just really wanted yeah. to hear the presentation, it was great. Okay, perfect. Okay.